good morning, everyone. Hope you all are doing well. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. It is Wednesday morning, and this is time for our 7 a.m. prayer call. Thank you for those who've logged on and those who will watch this later. So this morning, um, I want to be transparently honest, as I typically am. Um, and then I'm going to share verses of scripture, and then we're going to pray, and I'm going to give you a Wednesday back. So yesterday was a very difficult day for me. Um, as many of you may have seen on the news, um, another black man was murdered at the hands of law enforcement. And um, I will tell you, if you haven't watched the video, you probably don't want to watch the video. Um, as a pastor who has been into the bedside of, of members who've taken their last breath, it's not anything you ever get used to. To add to that, when you're literally watching someone blatantly murdered, it's even harder. Um, and that is hard to 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 swallow. Later on in the morning, another story broke where a lady called the police on a black man who asked her to leash her dog. And you watch how this lady would would anger calls the police on this man um, and the way she described him to the police. Um, and she was clearly in the wrong. And yesterday was hard for me because um, both of those incidences were another reminder of how some, if not many, see us being black men. And as a father of a 14-year-old black young man, um, being honest with you, sometimes it's hard to go low, go high when they're going low. And I was um, angry yesterday, and, and I'm unapologetic about being angry. Um, I didn't sin, but I was, I'm angry because... You know, as a believer of Jesus Christ, and I'm not a believer in a, in a perm here, Jesus, but a believer of Jesus Christ based on scripture, it is challenging um, to to continuously have to endure the the agony, the profiling, the hits against us as a people um, It's already hard to be a black man in America. Then you add on the other attributes you know, educated, well-spoken, um, financially comfortable, et cetera, et cetera. These things, what they, what they ought to be celebrated, actually add to the layer of fear. And I want to be clear, not every law enforcement is corrupt. I know some who are not black, who are not corrupt, um, who are not racist. I've had enough interaction with them to know that. Not every white person you know is racist. But unfortunately, there there are some and there are many that are and based on the pigmentation of your skin, you are a threat. And yesterday, I approached God multiple times throughout the day, really in anger. And the way I was I was raised, you don't question God. And I'm so glad that I matured in the things of God to where I learned that you can question God and that God welcomes you to come to him in, in true emotions. And I went to God yesterday and again this morning, um, really in rage and in anger. Um, and yesterday I dealt with two emotions. I dealt with anger and I dealt with fear. Um, anger that once again, a black man's life was taken from him over something that it shouldn't have been, that shouldn't have happened. The store called the police. They thought the man was dealing in for, a force check. That incident should not have led to murder. And it was blatant murder. If you watch the police officer's knee on his neck, he's almost like he's posing. With, with And no other law enforcement, which was standing around, even made the attempt to stop this police officer from doing what he's doing. These incidences m make it hard at times um, to bite your tongue. Now, I'm not a pastor that comes out on, and speaks on every issue of social justice. I'm, I'm fully aware of what's going on, but I don't want to ever use the pulpit to... Um, to do that every time something happened. But I do speak up on things that I think are important. Um, and I will remind America that Dylan Roof, who killed nine African-Americans after attending their Bible study, was handcuffed, taken to Burger King to get a meal because he was hungry. And that young man still lives today, albeit in prison, he lives today. He was given respect, more respect than the black men who have lost their lives have been given and was given that respect after he had blatantly murdered nine African-Americans and was unapologetic about doing it. Why do I share that with you? Because in the midst of my emotions, in the midst of my anger, in the, in the midst of my rage, I was also fearful. 
fearful because I'm raising, my wife and I are raising a 14-year-old son and a 10-year-old daughter. I thought about my son and the realization was, is I can, I can equip him as best as possible for the world that we live in. And my equipping still comes up short. My son, no matter how good of a person he is, and he really is a good person, will still pose a threat to some people just because of how he looks. He can dress well, speak well, be very mannerable, all the things that we teach him and still will be a threat to people just because of the way he looks. He can say yes, ma'am and no, ma'am. Yes, sir. No, sir. Out of respect, not out of um, inferiority and still be a threat to people. And that is the reality of the world that we're living in. And I do get tired when people say, when black people get murdered, that this too shall pass, that we ought to pray. I believe in the power of prayer. But I also believe that once you get up off your knees from prayer, there needs to be actionable steps. And as I was talking to God in my real emotions, and I wasn't trying to be super deep, I wasn't trying to remind God of scripture, I went to God in rage because the way I felt yesterday, I had to go to God and not allow my flesh to control things. And there were two verses of scripture that really ministered to me yesterday that I want to share with you. And they may or may not touch you, but they touch me and help me to at least process the emotions. Doesn't take away the anger to raise the fear. Help me process it. And the first one is Psalm 34, verse 19. Psalm 34, verse 19, and the word of the Lord reads, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth to him out of them all. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. Um, it, the verse is not saying that we are exempt from going through what life is hitting us with. If anything, it's saying that because of us who are righteous, we will endure many afflictions. Now, granted, it's not saying that it's not it's not permitting murderous acts by one race against another. But what this verse says to me is, is no matter how righteous you try to live your life, you're going to endure affliction. You're not exempt from what's going to come at you, towards you, against you. You're going to endure affliction. And young man, you need to understand that. And no matter how you treat other people and display respect to them, and I believe that you should, you're still going to endure afflictions. But the verse doesn't end there. It then says, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. And the peace that I got in the midst of my anger and my fear was knowing that the Lord is still in control. And yes, I wish God would respond sooner, would respond faster, would respond in the manner I want him to respond. But I'm also grateful that God doesn't react the way I want him to react. That God doesn't release the, the level of anger or greater towards um, our foes as we desire. But I am encouraged in knowing that the Lord will deliver out of them all. That God will do it. And so I want to encourage you today in that regard that many are the afflictions. Those of us who are desiring to live right before the Lord, we are not exempt from the afflictions. We're not a, a, exempt from the constant attacks against us. We're not uh, exempt from the warfare, not exempt from it. Some would even say that because of your profession of Christ, you're even more under the attack. Be that as it may, the blessing of it all is the Lord delivered out of them all. It's, it's in the knowing that God is still um, in full control. Second verse of scripture that helped me out was Psalm 46 verse 1. Psalm 46, verse one, and it reads, God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in trouble. God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in trouble. This helped me because um, no matter how weak I become under the circumstances of life, God is my refuge and my strength. God is my shelter. And God is my strength. God is my protection and he's my strength. Now, I can get in my truck this morning and ride anywhere and, and anything can happen to me. I'm not naive to that. But I also operate in the peace of knowing that God is my strength, my shelter and he's my strength, my refuge and my strength, my protection and my strength. 
And I have to rest in that peace because if I don't rest in that peace, then I allow my flesh to have me going in full attack against any and everyone I come in contact with. And that's not how I'm supposed to live my life. Um, he said, God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help. And that is the blessing of the verse is that God is present. God is active. God is engaged. And there is nothing that you are going through today that God is not fully aware of, that God is not fully engaged with, that God is not fully concerned about as relates to his children. So, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, the reality of what's going on in our world is that there is corruption in the land. There is evil in the land. There are people who have demented minds, as Dr. King said. And these are people who desire to wreak havoc on the lives of black America. We are a threat to people. Those of us who are listening and who are African-American, we are a threat to people. And not because of anything you said or done, but because of who you are. You are a threat. And we have to know that and understand how we conduct ourselves um, in that regard. A black man loses life. Law enforcement can come back and say he resisted arrest, that he was a threat, that he wouldn't comply. A white man kills nine people. He's handcuffed, given way more dignity than anyone else has ever received. Not a threat. One actually has a track record of killing nine in Dylan Roof. Another one does not. And yet and still, the result is different. That's the reality of the world that we live in. But I am grateful that as much as I have to live in the world, I'm not of the world. And I'm not trying to I'm not trying to to water down what has transpired. But it's the realization um, that if I stoop, I have to remain in the level that I stooped. As I'm raising my son from a father to a son, we spend a lot of time in conversation and I really try to impart in my son the tools that I believe are necessary for him to live a functional, successful life. And I believe wholeheartedly, unapologetically in the Lord Jesus Christ. But I believe, I believe in the Jesus of the scripture, not the Jesus that has been taught in the church. Now, why is that important? Because based on what church you grew up in and based on what dogma they were teaching and based on how, how traditional the saints were, they could have added to or taken away from who Christ is. I believe in what the scriptures say about Christ and I believe in that Jesus. And therefore, when things go on that I don't understand, I run back to the scripture. I don't run to somebody else. Try to help me get a better understanding. Why am I saying this to you? Because I am mad. I am angry. There's a part of me that's fearful. There's a part of me that wants to see retribution. But I'm also one that's to hold fast to the verse that says vengeance is mine, said the Lord, I shall repay. And so I tug a war between the flesh and the spirit. And as Paul said, I must die to my flesh daily. And so today I have to be conscious in how I deal with me and make sure I allow the Lord to have his way. God is our refuge. God is our strength. A very present help in a time of trouble. Sometimes people can't handle the transparency of the pastor. I respect that. But I refuse to lie about real emotion. I refuse to lie about real emotion because the same Bible that I preach and teach from to the people I'm entrusted to pastor, I have to also adhere to that. And I can't tell you to live a certain way that I'm not living. And I'm not and I can't tell you it's going to always be easy because it's not. Because when you are battling with with the reality in front of you, you have to run to that which you believe in. And because God is not always quick when he responds, you have to hold even tighter. And today I want to encourage your heart that whatever you are experiencing, be it what we talked about or something else, I want to encourage your heart that that life will make you live what you've been preaching. I say this to people all the time and I want to say it to you. You cannot sell what you haven't first bought. You cannot sell what you haven't first bought. What does that mean? If you don't believe it, you can't convince me to believe it. If you haven't made the investment in it, you then can't try to sell it to me. And because I actually wholeheartedly believe in the text, it's not hard for me to hold fast to the text in times of tribulation and trial. Doesn't mean I don't question God. Doesn't mean that I don't ask God what's going on. Doesn't mean that I don't get upset. Doesn't mean that I don't think about every black young man that's under my pastorate. Doesn't mean I don't think about my son and his future. Doesn't mean any of that. All of those things are true. 
They're absolutely true. But I stand, you stand on the shoulder of giants. What we are dealing with, our four parents experienced to a greater level. And we are here because they endured. And so I want to remind you once again, many are the afflictions of the righteous. I want to remind you again that God is our refuge and our strength. Very present help in the time of trouble. The scripture says, be angry, but sin not. So the Lord actually displayed his anger when he went to the temple and they were using the temple for money changing versus for prayer. He flipped over the table. He displayed his anger, showed his emotions at Lazarus' grave, real emotions. So he's not shying away from the emotions. It's what we do in the midst of those emotions that matter, that matter. And I want to encourage your heart today to allow the Lord to move in you, through you, and around you for his glory and for your good. Where you are, if you will, bow your heads or in every pastor you're in, let's go to God before God in prayer. God, our Father, I thank you for this Wednesday morning. And unlike the previous Wednesday mornings, I'm more emotional than I have been. Angry that here we go again. Angry that here we go again. And Lord, being honest with the people who are listening, I've been tug of warring with this. And I'm grateful that I'm able to come to you real and raw. And you're so much God, you welcome it and you can handle it. The tears that I've shed the last 24 hours, God, are, are not tears of joy, but of rage and of sorrow, of fear, tears of vengeance, that here we go again. But this morning, I am reminded that you are very present help in a time of trouble. I'm reminded that you, oh God, specialize and the things that seem impossible. I'm reminded, oh God, that there is nothing too hard for you. And Father, in the name of Jesus, in the realest and the rawest way possible, God, we need you. We need you because if you don't do it, and we're left to do it, destruction is the result. Today, a mother mourns the loss of her son over something that shouldn't have transpired. Today, another example has been given to a race of people that I belong to of the value of our life. But I'm also grateful that the blood of Christ was shed. And it was shed for me and us in mind. I will not hide the emotions that I'm experiencing. I will not run from them, but I run to you, oh God, because I know if left to my own devices, my reaction, my response is detrimental. And so, Father, I'm holding on to you and I'm praying for those who are on this prayer call that, that we would hold fast to you. That we, oh God, would remember what Scripture says in Proverbs 4 and 7. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom and all of our getting. Let us get understanding. This doesn't make sense. The only way it makes sense is when we come to the acceptance that sin is prevalent. Evil is real. And there really is an adversary against us, but not powerful, more powerful than you. So, Father, I pray for all those who are listening now, who shall listen later. I pray, oh God, that we can look Godward and have our strength renewed, have our joy restored, have our peace impacted and empowered. I pray, God, for every black man, young and old, living in this supposed United States of America, that I pray that the blood of Christ will still remain upon us. Help us today. Help us today. Help us today. And God, I pray for the local church that we, oh God, would be more than just pulpit to pews, but pulpit to pavement. That we will not be silent, 
when we are supposed to be speaking. There are enough verses in the scripture that shows your stance on social justice. And you fought and you stood with those who were inferior, those who were forgotten about, those who were the left behinds, those who are the plan B's. You died for us as well. Help us, Father. Help us today to stand on your word, on your promises, and walk upright like you have taught us to do. Your word says that those who sow in tears shall reap in joy. And today, real tears are being shed by many. We're trusting you, O oh God, and knowing that you can give joy. We thank you that weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. So, Father, we are holding on to you, not to United States, not to government, not to our outside black clergy. We're holding fast to you. We're holding fast to you, oh God, because if we don't hold fast to you, the result is destruction. So we hold fast to you and to your word. And Father, I pray your coverage over your people in the name of Jesus. God, we pray for families now that are struggling with what's going on, that are ready to wreak havoc. God, help us, help us, help us. On this Wednesday morning, we thank you for life. We realize the more of how easily it can be taken from us. So thank you for life. Thank you that we woke up this morning with the activity of our limbs, that we're able to move about because of you. But Father, reveal yourself in the land and help us in the name of Jesus. We give you the glory now in Jesus' name. Amen. I pray God's blessings over each one of you. I pray that God will continue to minister to you, through you, and around you. I also pray that as you go about your day, you will utilize wisdom and that you will be on guard and on watch. It's unfortunate that it has to be said, but it is true. There is an, a real adversary who seeks to kill, steal, and destroy. But I want to remind you that there is no opposite to your God. The enemy has no pow more power than God, not even on God's level. So don't allow the enemy to make you think that he can beat your God in anything. We are kingdom children, and therefore we are in the kingdom, children of the king, and we operate under kingdom principles. Stand up right. Be, be accountable for your actions, but most importantly, always seek to give glory to God. Again, I pray God's blessings on all of you. Remember, as I always say, don't just be blessed, live blessed. God bless you all.